the Christ being come a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is to say not of this building neither by the blood of goats and calves but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place talking about in heaven having a turn having obtained eternal redemption hey, that's powerful eternal redemption and in other words he paid the price for us for us for if the blood of bulls and of goats and of ashes of heifers sprinkling the unclean sanctify to the purifying of the flesh how much shall how much more shall the blood of christ who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to god purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living god now i want you to understand because blood is powerful it says in the book of leviticus that life is in the blood Amen. If you take blood out of someone's body, they're not going to be alive. Amen. So there's life that giveth blood. But before the Holy Spirit could be poured out on all flesh that he did, blood had to be, it had to be spilt for us. And so this blood is powerful about Jesus because if you actually understand nothing is done without bloodshed god one can't do anything without bloodshed with his covenant he has blood and i'm just going to show three things through the old testament about why his blood is shed and what it means till we come up to jesus christ i i'll actually say four because when we look at cain and abel in genesis chapter four the first blood actually was shed by a person was Abel because he gave his firstling of his sacrifice to God. That's why it says in Hebrews how Abel's sacrifice, excuse me, was more righteous. Why? And his, the blood that he gave was the offering to God where Cain's was what? Just fruit. Because in the beginning when God clothed Adam and Eve, he clothed them with skins of animals, and God was the first one that shed blood. See, he didn't need the blood in the beginning because everything was made perfect. But when man fell, that's when his blood had to be shed because he had a purpose for it to where we are today. Amen? I want you to see something here. In the book of Genesis, chapter 22, and we're pretty familiar with this. This is when Abraham was offering up Isaac. And I want you to see what he says in verse 1. And I'll just read through these. We won't be uh, Genesis 22, verse 1. It said, It came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. In other words, he tested him. And he said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. See, he wasn't hesitant to respond to God. When the Lord speaks, he should be like, here, here I am. I'm right here. And he said, take now thy son. And I want you to see something. He said, thy only son, Isaac. Now, you know, he had another son. Was, was with Ish, he had Ishmael with Hagar. But that one God didn't regard because his promise was with Sarah. So when God looked at who his son was, it was Isaac his only son, even though he had, he had Ishmael, but he wasn't looking at him because he wasn't the promise. It was Isaac was the promise. And so he says here, get thee up into the land of Moriah and offer him therefore a burnt offering upon one of the mountain, which I shall tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took of his two young men with them, and Isaac his son, and they clave the wood and the burnt offering and rose up and went up into the place which God told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. 
And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood and the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and the knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spoke unto Abraham, his father, saying, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire, the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. See, there you could see about Abraham and Isaac having that conversation. Because Isaac's like, usually you take a lamb with you and you're going to go in and slew the lamb. He didn't have anything. But see, with God, with Abraham, he believed God was going to provide something better than this his son to go ahead and give. And so he said here in verse 9, And it came to pl place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an offer there, a altar there, and laid the wood in, the alt in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham, called him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not your hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes, and he looked, and behold, a ram caught in the thicket by his thorns, or his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah-Jireh, as it is to this day, in Mount of the Lord shall it be seen. I want you to see something, because when Abraham offered his son this is the time you see that blood was shed so he shed blood because without the shedding there would be no remissions of sin but this was something that he did to, for something that was going to be afar off later on because when john saw jesus he said before he baptized him he said the lamb of god he said, this is the Lamb of God that will be slain for the sins of the world. So he saw this afar off, but God had the same place where he was supposed to be in Mount Moriah was the same place where now Jerusalem's at to offer that sacrifice. But this one, you see, it's for shedding of blood. We're going to see another one. It's not just for shedding. It's for the spreading of blood. See, because through this Bible, there's going to have to be blood that's always shed, no matter what. They kill, they have to have blood, because without any blood, there can be no atonement for anyone's sins. And when we go to the book of Exodus, I want you to see something. In Exodus 4, because you remember, when he told Isaac, he told, he told Abraham, take your son, your only son. When we look here in the book of Exodus, <clears throat> he says right here in chapter 4, in verse 22, I'll start at 21. He said, The Lord said unto Moses, When thou goest to return into Egypt, see that thou do all these wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thy hand. But I will harden his heart, and he shall not let the people go. And you shall say unto Verel, Thus saith the Lord Israel, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. See, when Abraham came, then Isaac came, and then Jacob came, which was named Israel, which came out the whole 12 tribes. When they were put in Egypt, God called the whole children of Israel his son, his firstborn son. He even referred to the tribe of Israel, all of them, as his firstborn. 
That's why he wanted them to come out of Egypt to sacrifice unto the Lord in the wilderness. But that was his firstborn as a whole nation was them. That's what God regarded because they slayed a lot of Hebrews. A lot of bloodshed was slayed uh, because, because of Pharaoh in Egypt. A lot of them were slayed. But when you look at it, God was going to take their firstborn because what? He was slain his firstborn. And so what he do? He said here in Exodus 12. It says here in verse 12, verse 1. It said, the Lord spoke unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. And it shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto the children, the, all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him take, let him and his neighbor next unto you. Take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall he make him count for the lamb. And the lamb shall be without blemish, a male for the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. And you shall take it unto the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two sides of the post and on the upper door post of the houses where they shall eat. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread with bitter herbs shall they eat it. They shall not what eat of it raw or now nor sodden with water, but roast it with fire, his heads with his legs and the Puritans thereof. And you shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning shall you burn with fire. I want you to know when he took the blood this time of the lamb, what he do? It wasn't being shed. He, they were going to spread the blood. And they took the blood and they spread it on the two sides of the doorpost and up on the upper part of the door. Well, when you look at Jesus on that, his two sides of the doorposts are his hands. And then he had the thorns on his head. But that blood would drip, what? To the ground where his feet would be on the cross. But that blood was spread on the doorposts as a symbolism of what was the future to come of Jesus being what? On the cross for us to atone for our sins. Amen? So we got one where it was the shedding of blood. We got the other one where it's the spreading of blood. We're going to see the third one where it's actually the sprinkling of blood that he did for us. In Exodus 24, it says this here, that when the law was instituted, Moses was there. God still needed blood. Because they left out of Egypt, and then what ended up happening? God was going to make a covenant with his people. And so this time, when God brought them up out of Egypt, they were in the wilderness because he was going to establish his nation and bring them into the promised land. But here, when he was going, it says Moses, as far as sacrifice to the Lord, he did sacrifices to the Lord. And it says here in verse 24, Verse 1, chapter 24, verse 1. He said unto Moses, Come up unto the Lord, thou and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and the seventy elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go up with them. And Moses came and told all the people all the words of the Lord and the judgments, all the judgments, and all the people answered with one voice 
and said all the words which the Lord had said will we do. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning and builded a altar under the hill and 12 pillars according to the 12 tribes of Israel. And he sent the young men of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings and a sacrifice peace offerings of oxen unto the Lord. And Moses took half the blood and its basins and half the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the blood of the covenant and read it in the audience of the people. And they said, all that the Lord has said will we do and be obedient. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant, which the Lord has made with you concerning all these words. I want you to see something. He took blood. Now people do in other religions. They take the water and sprinkle it. This, he took blood and he sprayed it all over all the people so the people would be cleaned by the blood of the Lord from the sacrifice of the animals over their body because they couldn't present themselves before God without any blood. And look at what ended up happening after this blood was shed. It says here in verse 9, Then went up Moses and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu and 70 of the elders of Israel, and they saw the God of Israel. Look at that. Without the blood, they wouldn't be able to see the Lord. But when that blood was spread upon them, it was sprinkled over them, it says what? They saw the God of Israel. See, the only way you can have a relationship with God is through blood. If you don't have blood, you cannot have a relationship with God. Only the way to get to God is through blood. That's the only way. Without it, there's no relationship, there's no atonement. Oh, he'll just be someone distant to you. But when you got the blood, you'll be able to see God. You'll be able to have a relationship and fellowship with the Lord because it's the blood that justifies you. It's the blood that cleans you. It's the blood that redeems you. That's why you need the blood. Amen. So he says here, and they saw the God of Israel and there was under his feet, as it were paved, work of sapphire stones and it was the body of heaven in its clearness. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, they laid not his hand, and also they saw God and did eat and drink. In other words, they had communion with him. Amen? That's what we're going to do today. They had communion. They ate and drank with the Lord. Here's the Lord in heaven, and they got a glimpse of what heaven looked like. They saw his feet and all the sapphire stones, and they're eating and drinking with God because that blood was spread all, sprinkled all over them. That's powerful right there. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount and be there, and I will give thee the tables of stones and a law and commandments which I have, given, which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up and his minister Joshua, and Moses went into the mount of God. The only thing that you could see, because he went 40 days and 40 nights, you would think that after the people just saw God and they ate and drank with them, that they got weary and began to build an idol. Because he began eating, they ate and drank with the Lord. When you see a vision of God, that should change your life. But you see, when Moses left, they end up going and build another altar. They built another altar. As far as altar that wasn't of God, it was an ox that they built. But man, they just got done seeing the Lord in heaven and eating and fellowshipping with them. You would think if you did that, that would never leave your mind. I mean, you wouldn't even want to do it. Even if Moses took however long, it wouldn't even matter because you just got done seeing the God of Israel in heaven with the blood with eating and communion with them. Praise God. So look, these three things we see that there was a shedding, 
<clears throat> there was a spreading and there was a sprinkling of the blood that happened. But the, when we come up to today and what Jesus did for us in the book of John, it says here in John chapter says right here in John chapter 19. It says in verse 26, when Jesus therefore saw his mother and his disciples standing by whom he had loved, he saith unto his mother, woman, behold your son. Then he saith to the disciple, talking about John, Behold your mother. And from that hour that his disciples took her unto his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing all things that now were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar and filled with the sponge with vinegar and put it hit upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. And when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. And the Jews therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was a high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and break the legs of the first and of the others which were crucified with them. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was dead already and they broke not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came out blood and water. And he that saw a bared record that his record is true and he knoweth that he saith, true that you might believe for these things were done that the scripture might be fulfilled a bone of him shall not be broken and again upon another scripture they shall look upon whom they have pierced when jesus was on the cross we know he was beaten we know he was whipped we, a matter of fact he was tortured and then they put thorns and everything on him, and then they pierced his hands and his feet. But then when he poked his side, this was the blood that was spilled. So when he spilt the blood, the blood was spilled for us. Because this blood wasn't the blood of animals. This wasn't the blood of bulls and goats. This was blood from a man, a man who paid the price for us. And without the shedding of blood, it says there's no atonement. There's no remissions. There's no forgiveness. That's why we need that blood. That's why it says here in Ephesians chapter, it says chapter two, one, two, it says in verse 14, or I'll start at verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were afar off are made near by the blood of Christ. Why? Because you can't get close to him. You can't even be close to God without the blood. That's the thing. But now in Christ, you who were afar off are now made nigh by what? The blood of Christ. Because his blood causes us to be close to him. Amen? So when we have the blood with us, we are close to God. That's why he said he'll never leave us or forsake us. Look at this. It says right here in verse 14, For he is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity or the hostility, even the law of commandments, contained in ordinances for to make it himself of twine one new man so making peace and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross 
having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to them that were what? Afar off, and to those who were nigh. And in other words, he's saying we were reconciled by God, both unto God in one body, being having slain the enmity. His body took all the hostility on his on the cross. He took it so two now can become one in the flesh. So he broke down that whole wall that was separating the Jews and the Gentiles from God, and he made it so we all have access through the blood of Jesus in him. The blood is what redeems us. The blood is what reconciles us. And the blood is also what makes us justified. Amen? It also cleanses us. What does it say in 1 John 1, 9? If we confess our sins, he's just and faithful to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. How are we cleanse? By the blood of lamb. Amen? We also can overcome by the blood of the Lamb. It says in Revelations 12, it talks about we overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony, and we don't love our lives even unto death. In other words, we don't even consider our life of value because we consider him more value than our lives. Amen? But it's his blood that we overcome. Amen? Look at the blood that he did in Revelation 5. I want you to see something. This blood right here, it says in Revelation 5, it says right here in verse 7, And he came and took a book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. This is in heaven. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and a golden veils full of odor, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every nation, every kindred, every tongue, every people, and every nation, and had made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign where? not in heaven, reign on earth. That's our position here on earth now. We're to reign on earth because of what? The blood that he redeemed us with. Amen. In heaven, he took that blood that he shed here on earth for us to present it before God because he was the only one worthy to open the books that were sealed so he can present himself and present us with them that we can be cleansed and made righteous with God now because he's the mediator between God and man, and that's the man Christ Jesus. That's why it's so precious when we have blood. Without any blood, there is no atonement. Without the blood, the Spirit of God wouldn't have come because you need the blood. Amen. The blood has to be shed first so that way the Spirit can come. Amen. You can't put a new spirit in old vessels. You need to put a spirit. You can put the Holy Spirit in new vessels, but the way the vessels are made new is by what? The blood. Amen? That's why it says here in Hebrews, in verse chapter 10, verse, 20, verse 19, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiness by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, what? By his blood. And what? Our bodies washed by the pure, with pure water, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. I'm telling you, this, the blood that Jesus has for us, that he spilt, that he spilt for us, 
is more precious and more valuable than any person or riches or gold or silver or any money. That's why money doesn't mean much to God. It's here in the earth. It's not for heaven. It's here in the earth to help the kingdom of God. But the real thing is the heart. Amen? Because it's the blood he spilt for us. Amen? God made us here on earth. We've been redeemed, but he made us here to reign on earth. Amen? Not to be defeated, but to reign as kings and priests in Christ Jesus. That's what he wants us. I'll tell you how precious the blood is because we're going to do the communion in a minute if you get those prepared. When you look at them, when they the children of Israel, they came out of When you look first about the children of Israel before they came out of Egypt, blood was shed. We saw that it was spread across the doors. And they had to do, they ate, which was a type and shadow of communion as well before they went into the wilderness. But it, lo it says in Psalms 105, look at this. When they came out, it says, <clears throat> verse 37, that he brought, he brought them forth also with silver and gold. And in other words, they didn't leave empty. When they came out of Egypt, they came out with silver and gold because the Egyptians wasn't going to have to use it because they weren't going to be there anymore. But uh, the children of Israel were going to use it, what? To build God's tabernacle and to build his uh, vessels and things he was going to prepare to worship him, to use it as a, a tabernacle for his sacrifices, for his priest and all that. So it says, when they came out, it says, there was not one feeble person among their tribes. And in other words, when they came out of Egypt, they were in Egypt for 450 years. I'm sure they didn't have the best food. I'm sure they weren't treated great. But you would think the people being in slavery that long weren't all strong and healthy. They were living for Egypt. Egypt was having the best of everything. They were having the least of everything. But it says when they came out, there was not one feeble person among their tribes. In other words, there wasn't no one weak, no one sick, no one afflicted. Why? Because when they ate of the lamb, that God had them sacrificed, it did something to their body. It brought healing to their body to get them to be prepared when they went out into the wilderness. That's what communion does. God, Jesus paid the price on the cross. So what? The weak can be made strong. So what? The sick can be made whole. Amen? The people that are suffering can be made alive. Amen? So he wants us to vision him on the cross when we do the communion to remember what he did for us. He took all that. He took our sins. So we have the right to come before God. Amen? He took it so we can be made whole. That's why it says here in the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, in verse 23, Paul wrote, For I have received of the Lord, and that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. See, Jesus told them in John chapter 6, I believe it's verse 56. He said this, 53. Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat of my flesh, eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. See, there's life given with blood. 
Now, he already paid that price, but this is symbolic of what we take and how powerful this is because when you do this by faith, whatever is going on in your life, God can make it whole. Amen? I mean, it doesn't matter. Whatever infirmity you have in your body, God can heal it. This is the meal that heals, is communion. Some places they never teach that, but if you understand what Jesus paid on the cross, he took your sicknesses so you can be whole. Otherwise, why would you want to even be whole? Because what price did he pay? He paid the ultimate price for us. Amen? So when we take this, it's a powerful thing. So wherever you're lacking in your life, when you take this, God can restore your life, restore your body, restore your health. Amen? Restore your soul. Praise God. So we're going to do communion in a moment. And in verse 25 of 11 of 1 Corinthians, he said the same manner he also took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do is ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, what do you show? You show the Lord's death till he comes. This, in another words, reminds you he died for you. But it doesn't end there. It also means he's alive for us. Amen? Today. But this is just remembering all the time that he did die for us. See, when I was, I'm saying because I'm born in a Jewish family, we used to do Passover all the time, every year, to remember us being brought out of Egypt. But this right here is better than that. <laughs> we weren't just brought out of Egypt. We were brought out of sin, death, and the devils held in us captive. And we got an eternal redemption in heaven that's an eternal life for us that we can have forever. I'd rather have this any day than just being brought out of Egypt to go into a land of promise because that was just a shadow of things to come. With the shadow that was to come was Jesus to pay the price that we don't just come out of bondage and slavery. We go to have eternal promises with God in heaven. Amen. He took us out of the bondage and slavery, not of Pharaoh, but of the devil. And he gave us an eternal reward with him in heaven. Amen. So this just reminds us of what he's done for us. Praise God. So as we peel back the first condiment right here we'll take this bread and we remember so if anything's going on in your body I don't care what it is whatever's going on in your body when you take this judge that in your body and not don't even receive it receive his healing amen receive what he's done for you you can judge he said judge yourself so if something's in your body that doesn't belong there, it can go in the name of Jesus because we're going to take his body for ours. Amen? He paid the price for us. Praise God. So right now, as he said in his word, he said when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So we're going to remember him now. Thank you, Jesus. And we can peel back the second part. Now, when we drink this, he said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you drink it, you do it in remembrance of him. So as we drink this, we remember we, he bore our griefs. He carried our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of his, our peace is upon him. 
and with his stripes we are healed. In Jesus' name, let's take the... Ooh. It's a little strong. I don't want it. Ooh. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because right now, after we took this, let us just lift our hands up. And thank you, Father, for this communion, this time, Father. We thank you for your blood, your body that was spilt for us, the blood, the body that was bruised, that you took all our sins, all our iniquities, all our diseases, all our sicknesses, all our infirmities and weaknesses upon your cross, Lord. We thank you so we can be whole, so we can be healed. We thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name, for the victory that we have, the victory in Jesus, Lord. We thank you that you have made us more than conquerors. You made us victorious. We thank you and give you glory. We give you honor and we give you all praise, hallelujah, in Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, praise God, hallelujah. Well, before we close, I don't want to leave without us always giving an invitation. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, I just want to ask if you have never known the Lord, this is the day you can do it. Because we want to give you that opportunity to invite you to Him. So if you have never gave your life to the Lord, the Lord's calling you. His Spirit's nugging on you. He's pulling on your heart. That means He wants you to come home. And if you have known the Lord, and you know you haven't been living right, the Lord still paid the price on the cross for you. But we want to give you the invitation today to present it to you that Jesus loved you so much that he died for you. And if that's you, you could raise your hand if you want to know the Lord today, if you, if you want to invite him into your life. Or you could write us right down on the live stream. You could just write something down and tell him that's me. We just want to pray for you and pray with you. All you have to do is say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. I believe that you died for me and you rose again. I thank you for forgiving me of all my sins and cleaning me from all my iniquities. I thank you for making me born again in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you right now for anyone that has prayed that prayer. Lord, we just pray that you watch over them, protect them. We bind the hand of the enemy off of them in the name of Jesus, and we thank you that they have been translated from darkness to light. We thank you for, Father God, healing them, restoring them in Jesus' mighty name. And we give you the glory, all the honor, and all the praise for doing it now. In Jesus' precious name, hallelujah. Amen and amen. Well, if you did say that and you prayed that prayer, we'd like to hear from you. We got material that we'd like to give to you. All you got to do is write us, let us know, and we'll be sure to get that out to you as soon as possible. We just want to know your love. God loves you. We love you. And Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Have a blessed week. Praise God.